We're gonna make and animate a motor like this using drivers. I know what you're thinking. What the heck are drivers? <laughs> I didn't know until last week either. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. The internet tells me that drivers are scripts. Their main purpose is to control properties with other properties. In example, the rotation of one object is controlled with the location of another object. That green thing is going to be a slider and it'll control the rotation of my gear. I need a graph editor window open. And I need to change this jobby down here to drivers. I make sure my gear is selected and right click on Y rotation. I click add drivers and click manually create later single. That makes it so I don't select the other axes. For this example today, we're only going to be using scripted expressions. Typing var into the expression by itself just passes the value of that variable right here into it. We point to the slider object and make sure that Z location is selected. When we try to move the slider around, nothing happens. Why? We have this error over here that needs to be taken care of. So we go under the file tab in the preferences and tick auto run Python scripts. Now when we move the slider around, the gear rotates. So we've effectively mapped linear position to rotation. If I want the rotation to go slower, I just change it in my expression. So here I'm going to multiply by 0.1 to make it turn 10 times slower. And it works. You can pretty much drive anything in Blender with anything else in Blender. Later we'll drive everything not by the slider, but by how much time has passed, or rather how many frames has passed. I have my flywheel on the third layer so it's out of my way, and my slider on the first layer. Now I'm going to make the piston, connecting rod, and camshaft parts on the second layer. Note how I make sure that the origin of my piston rod is towards the top, because I want it to pivot from there. Now I want to duplicate all three of those, but I'm going to use Alt-D so that it instantiates it. This way I can ch make changes to the originals and have it affect all the copies. Then I move those copies to first layer. This nonsense I'm doing right now is fixing an error that I made. So if on the second layer I affect the original, it changes all of the other copies. See here's the one on layer one that's been changed because I altered the one on layer two. That's awesome. That'll be significantly useful for when it's all rigged up and I want to change all the pistons all at once. So now I want to add a driver on the y-axis and map it to the flywheel, the rotation of the flywheel. So this is pretty much the same thing as having a copy rotation constraint. It's not working because I forgot to type var up there to put the variable in the expression. Now it works good. Now I want my connecting rod to go up and down, so I need some sort of a fluctuation. And what we're going to use is a sine wave, or our sine function, that's fed by the variable that comes from the rotation of the 
a flywheel. So we add a driver to the Z location of the rod. And we connect it to the camshaft. We know we want to use camshaft 001 because that's a copy of the original. And the original doesn't move at all, so it wouldn't change anything. So we want to leave this number in place where it is because we want our uh, rod to be a little higher than what the other is. And we just add sign parentheses there. Now we can't see it working, but it is. So we'll just move on to the piston. So then we add a driver to the Z location of the piston and we just map it to the location of the connecting rod. This would be the same thing as a copy location constraint. Now I didn't show it on the screen but I also had to type there in my expression of course. So now I want to make my rod look like it's connected to a crankshaft or you know like a bicycle pedal or something so it's got to waggle back and forth so I'm going to add a driver to the Y rotation of it for this expression I'm going to use cosine um, if you're not familiar with trigonometry very much cosine and sine are 90 degrees out of phase from each other and they complement each other when you're trying to plot a circle. So I just want the value of cosine parentheses there times one for now. That times one is going to make it so that I can adjust how much it swings because if I try it now it's not swinging right it doesn't look good and it's actually not traveling enough either the way my slider is. So I'm going to change my sliders movement uh, from point 0.1 to just times itself, times 1. So now we get a significant more movement and it's wrong because my rod is swinging way too far. So I want to adjust how far it'll go and I turn that 1 down to point 0.2. Let's see how that looks. That looks way better. It almost looks right. So now I select all three of these guys again and Alt Duplicate to make instances. And I make four instances of it. And they all move together, and we don't want that. So, we'll select the first camshaft and add to our variable 2. That'll make it a little out of phase of the first one. And we'll add to the second one 4. We'll leave the fourth one alone, and when we move, up, move it up and down now, it looks more like an engine. That's what we like right there. Looks like there's a cool firing order going on. Now I'll just spend a few minutes making my engine look better by editing the originals on layer 2. And that'll change everything else automatically. At the end I'll map the rotation of the flywheel to the frame so it'll go automatically without having to move my slider.
Because rotation is measured in radians instead of degrees, I want it to go a little slower. So I'm just going to type in frame times 0.5. And that'll make it go by itself. 